Kevin Klein. Today on Let's Talk Winnipeg, we are going to take a look at the past week here at Winnipeg City Council and talk about some of the items that the press covered a little bit. You know, they gave it a little bit of coverage and we'll talk about some items that didn't get any coverage. The first one, very proud of my colleague uh, and I saw this, I had no idea. And I don't know if you did because of course it didn't make the media. Along Route 90, Keniston, uh, there was uh, construction zones put up. We call it the uh, DCZ, Designated Construction Zone. And it just appeared. Well, one councillor, uh, a colleague of mine, Councillor Nason from Transcona, noticed this and immediately took to his email and started you know, sending notes to the public service going, how is this a construction zone? How can you just put signs there? People are gonna get photo radar tickets for something that isn't really a legitimate construction zone. Why are we doing this? And it was back and forth for a couple of days, but his persistence paid off. He was right. It wasn't a real designated construction zone. We just put the signs there. These are the things we have to be careful about. Maybe it was a mistake, and that's quite possible. And if it was, we fixed it. I wonder what would have happened if we had handed out 30, 40, a couple of hundred photo radar tickets when it really wasn't a designated construction zone. Some people would have just paid it, been angry, but they would have paid it, so we would have got that money. That's not right. So this gets back to one of the issues we have, communication. They, public service, I would like to see the public service, and this is what I would do, is I would make sure that we're communicating with every area councillor when there is going to be a designated construction zone in that area, where and why, and for how long. That seems fair. I mean, we would have all those details. We don't have to hire extra staff to find that out. It wouldn't cost any more money. That just seems to me to be fair and reasonable communication, but that's not happening. Uh, another uh, issue that uh, is no, not going to be in the media, but something that I, I just have to mention. We have all these uh, uh, executive policy committee chairs, and they each chair a certain committee. And we have one called the Innovation Committee. I don't know if you've seen their agenda. Please go online. It's one item that was at the Finance Committee already. It, it, this is a waste of taxpayer dollars. Really? Is this the best use of your tax dollars? Because we have to pay the chair right? Uh, because that becomes a part of the, the mayor's inner circle and they get paid more money. Uh, 14000 some dollars a year plus they get their ex extra expenses and, and who knows what else. Um, so do we really need that for one meeting? For a meeting that has one agenda item? I, I mean look, look at last year and see how many times that meeting was cancelled because there was nothing on the agenda. Here's a good opportunity to save the money, eliminate that EPC category, eliminate that standing policy committee, blend it in with finance if you want or in with another one because it really has no true mandate and reallocate those dollars. I know it's not a lot of money, I get it, but if you use the same math that the city uses when they put in administrative fees for patio permits, which I talked about the other day, well I mean it could cost us tens of thousands of dollars and I'm happy to put that together for you because I can play that game as well. It's just the right thing to do. We should be looking at ways to become more efficient, more effective and better customer service providers. Not looking at more ways to spend every dollar we get for fear that we might lose it. Another thing you may not have heard about but probably most of you did because this did get some media coverage is the exorbitant water bills that happen to be making the rounds at the City of Winnipeg. You may recall I moved a motion some time ago uh, requesting the public service look at and implement a 30-day billing process. In today's digital world, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So I'm sure we could offer digital billing on a monthly basis. Some, of course, that are only able to get their bill via mail will have a complaint there, but the option there would be you could sign up for equal payments. Uh, Hydro has that, for example. You pay an equal payment plan, and at the end of the year, we'll take a look at the account. Did you pay too much, or do you have to pay a little bit more? Fair and reasonable. So people have been reaching out to me because their water bills have gone from $200 to $300 up to 7 
thousand dollars, some over ten thousand dollars. And as opposed to the public service or to, as opposed to the city of Winnipeg helping with that and trying to get to the bottom of that, the response that I'm hearing about is pay your bill, got to pay your bill first, and then you can start you know, challenging that down the road. But if it's a leak, you're going to have to fix it yourself because that's what happens at the city of Winnipeg. We're looking into it to see if that happens in other jurisdictions. So far, we haven't found one. You've got to fix the pipe from your house to the middle of the street. Why don't I get a discount in taxes then? Because when I pay property taxes, I know I'm paying for services, but I'm also paying for regular maintenance and you're not doing it. This is an issue that I hope gets more press. This is a fundamental problem. We are more focused on being tax collectors than we are on being service providers. We have a monopoly with water and waste. What are you going to do? Your water and waste rates have gone up so much under this uh, government. It's almost the same as your property tax bill now. Imagine that. The gap used to be this big. It's now this big. Another issue that uh, we, we chatted about a little bit is the $500 fee, administrative fee that was added to restaurants that wanted to have a temporary patio or a patio on their property. That was, that was really the last straw for me. Um, and I thought, you know, at a time when we need to be one great city, at a time when we need to work with our residents to save businesses, to save families, it is no secret. I believe the only way, and this is after talking to a friend who has a PhD in economics, is consumer spending. Canadian consumer spending. Specifically, local consumer spending. That is what's going to rebuild the economy out of the gate. Large industries, corporations are not going to be quick to start spending again and hiring. In fact, they may look at changes that negatively impact some areas. I don't want to see that. I would work towards that right now. I would get a plan where we're focusing on major companies that are not only in Winnipeg today. Let's find out what we can do to make sure they don't change their footprint here. Let's make sure that we can do everything we can to maybe entice them to bring more staff here. But at the same time, we have to allow money to be spent by consumers in the city. Every tax dollar we take, whether it's a fee or property taxes or whatever it might be, is a dollar out of our economy. That's a dollar that will not be spent on a family business, small business, and it will not build our economy. It'll fill our pockets of the government, but it will not rebuild our economy. But we're going to go back to you for more tax dollars because we didn't really reduce our spending and we're going to be short. So we'll go to the province or the federal government and they'll have to come to you for it. We need to fix this. We need to break this ridiculous cycle. Consumer spending will bring back our economy. Outside travel is not going to be happening for a long time. Experts are saying five to six years before we get back to where we were pre-COVID. So we have to focus on local consumer spending, attracting spending from outside of Winnipeg, outside of the perimeter, and then maybe into Saskatchewan, Alberta, Ontario, and bringing people here. And they'll come here if we have lovely restaurants, which we're famous for. 10,000 have already closed in the province of Manitoba, and that's according to the Manitoba Restaurant Association. I don't want to see one more close. Tacking on more fees is just wrong. We know the data shows us that we are not putting through the same number of permits we did one year ago. We have the time. We have the resources. It's not going to cost any more money. But it will rebuild our economy. It'll bring more people back to work. Isn't that what you want to do as an elected official? Isn't that where you want to say, wow, I was a part of that? Not, hey, we got more money into the coffers. It's priorities. It's all priorities. Last but not least, uh, we did talk about uh, uh, previously too was the financial plan and the fact that we don't have a financial plan. Um, we are in that mode today where we have to uh, start developing new plans. We can't continue to do that the old way. The status quo has got to go. 
I used to be in my office <laughs> in the private sector. Um, the status quo has got to go. People loved it. People were putting that logo. We had a little logo made for it. And they had it on their desk because they were tired of doing things the old way. We continue to do that under this government and under this leadership. We can do it better. We need to put the public service back to the table and say, we come up with a plan. If we open on this date, what does that look like? If we open under this level, what does that look like? How quickly will we be open? I don't want to wait two, four, six weeks to open a pool. We need to be the first ones out of the gate that day. If it starts at midnight on a Friday, I want to have our doors open to the fullest capacity the next day, Saturday morning. That's what we should be doing. That's what residents want us to do. We need to be doing that kind of work. Uh, lastly, we are going to talk about uh, a few of the master plans that are going through real quickly. They are getting lots of media attention. That's why I wanted to save it to the end. But uh, I appeared at the IRPW, uh, Standing Policy Committee, to talk about the transit master plan and uh, share my disappointment that a billion dollar plan uh, is given four days notice to councillors to review. We can't ask questions at the committee meeting. We did have a council seminar, but those are limited and you can ask certain questions, but you're given the material when the meeting starts. So you don't have time to go through the material and pay attention to their presentation uh, and then do your own due diligence. And I know that they were gonna ask for a 30 day layover, but that's not enough. This is a billion dollar spend on a 25 year plan. You need more than 30 days. I, I would say 180 days because there's a lot of holes in this plan. I would rather see us come together as counselors and bring residents' concerns forward again because this plan does not address some of the major issues. And the major issues we have today is people are not using transit. So just because we develop and spend billions on a new rapid transit bus line or three doesn't mean they're going to use transit because we're not dealing with the fundamental problems. We need to offer a better service to our customers. There we are again, right? All back to customer service. Safety. That was number one with many of the residents I've spoken with. We have to be honest about that. I know nobody wants to talk about that. It has to be safe. I've talked to some families that would not go downtown for a Jets game via transit. They would love to, but they will not. So we need to deal with the safety. We need to put a plan together. Which leads me to why this is not the right time to be passing master plans because of one person's agenda or legacy. All these departments and all these master plans need to sit down. They need to get out of their silos and see how they're connected. In order for us to be successful, we need this department to do this and that department to do this and this department will require this. Let's have that conversation before we put in all these plans because that's the old way. That's the status quo. This would have been a great city if we planned it right. You've heard that joke. I'm not going to support the transit master plan and I know there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, oh, you're against transit. No, I'm not. I, I think safety, price, consistency, scheduling, and electrification should be at the top of our list. What do you think? Let me know. Send an email anytime, kevin at kevinkline.ca. Have a great weekend.